take another drink. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you. I, I understand. I need the other drink. So Tony's going to come up here and uh, say some things before I go. I'm going to get going. Hallelujah. Just yeah. Oh. Um, I got this uh, from uh, uh, Dutch Sheets the other day, and it's about uh, Jesus and the, the time of year that we celebrate. And he made me think about some things, and uh, it was some, gave me some real things to uh, think about and ponder on, and I thought I'd share it, uh, share it with you, folks. It says, have you ever wondered what was going through Christ's mind before the Holy Spirit transformed him into a microscopic seed and carried him to the womb of a young girl who was yes. about to become, and he was about to become breakable? Did he wonder how it would feel to uh, no longer be omnipresent, om omniscient, omnipotent? Did he wonder how physical pain would feel, hunger, thirst, weakness, cold, headache, loss, Christ knew he would have to fight his way through the birth canal, be fed, be bathed, mm -hmm. learn to crawl, develop balance and walking skills, form words, grow, gain knowledge. He would ex uh, experience sleep, scrapes, blisters, calluses. He would enter the realm of time. He would also bleed. One has to wonder if uh, Jesus ever reconsidered the plan and the process. Since he was the uh, lamb slain before we were ever created, that's from Revelation 13:8. Uh, uh, I don't suppose he did. Yet, uh, before the Holy Spirit held him and began the transformation, there must have been at least an emotional. Here we go. I'm about to be human. Yeah. And then he was, and there was no turning back. Yeah, Numerous questions come to mind as I consider Christ's humanness. As a child. When did the first awareness of who he was begin to set in? Uh, when did he first look up at the star-filled sky and, and think, I created that? <laughs> when did he first recall saying, let there be? Yeah. When did the uh, calculus of our solar system begin creeping back into his memory? Did he ever have a nightmare? When did he stop asking Mary questions and start explaining things to her? <laughs> did his siblings ever wonder at his gift and his intellect? Who was his best friend growing up? What did his laugh sound like? What was his favorite color? Food. Was there any food which of course he created he didn't like? <laughs> at what age did his carpentry skills begin superseding those of Joseph? Did they ever joke about it? How old was he when Joseph died? How did he deal with the pain? How did he react the first time he saw a serpent or observed cruelty, violence, or greed? When he saw lightning and heard thunder, did he smile? Luke 10, 18. Uh, and when did the uh, love that demanded his humanness, the uh, passion for his eternal bride, begin welling up in his chest? As he fashioned wood in the carpenter shop, did he ever pause and gaze pensively toward a hill in Jerusalem? Did he wince when he drove nails? We will never truly understand the ramifications, the intricacies, the complexities of incarnation. Merging uh, limitations of humanness with an infinite God simply can't be accomplished by human brains. Indeed, Paul uh, referenced God's uh, Christ is God's indescribable gift, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 9.15. But it is healthy to ponder nonetheless. We must in fact, uh, we must in fact, it is imperative that we consider the cost to Christ. The essential, uh, the, it's essential that we wonder at such love, marvel at the plan, stand in awe of his audacity. So this year on Christmas Day, take time to think about it, sing. Listen to Silent Night, Away in the Manger, O Holy Night, your favorite Christmas carol, and intently consider the words. Recapture the wonder, read the uh, story again in Luke's Gospel. Close your eyes and try to envision Mary's uh, angelic visitation. Put yourself in Joseph's shoes. How hard it would be to believe Mary's story. Uh, see the stars, the stable, the manger, the Christ child. 
and then converse with Abba and Jesus. Thank them for Christmas. Yes, but also for the cross, and the purpose of Christmas was the cross. Amen. Okay, children, follow the leader. No, not you in the back. <laughs> I didn't I didn't hear him. I didn't hear you come in. I didn't hear you come in. I snuck in. It's not because I don't talk loud, it's because you guys don't hear me. So you guys are gonna miss out. <laughs> they gotta go to a different church. They're not just running out. So, if you turn with me to Hebrews, the eleventh chapter. sing that song, I'm Thirsty Lord. Yeah. Oh. I don't know about you, when I was a kid, I really liked to drink. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like to drink a little, I liked to drink a lot. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't like knowing that I was drunk, I wanted to be drunk. I wanted to be inebriated so I could act however I wanted. Because before I drank, I was really shy. After I drank, I was the coolest person in the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could do anything. Go and, did. and so I was thinking, because when I was that way, I would get with fellowship with other people. A bar is a fellowship place. A bar is a fellowship place. I love bars, because everybody in there is, you know, they're all doing the same thing, and they're all talking. They're not saying anything, but they're all talking, and they're talking like this. And don't interrupt me, because I'm talking. Yeah. Are you, what are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> no, we're talking. See, when you get inebriated in the Holy Spirit, and I believe that we are supposed to live inebriated. Mm -hmm. Because before I drank, it was my humanness. And I said this last week. Before I drank, it was my humanness, all I had. But once I got another spirit in me, I could act different because I was different. Yes. Because something happened on the inside of me, right? Yes. When I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and I begin to be filled with the Holy Spirit, what happens to me, I get a, uh, an altered state of consciousness. Each one of us does, if we realize, we'll get an altered state of consciousness, and therefore I'm not who I was a couple minutes ago, I'm different now. Especially when I come around you kind of guys. Because I'm still that shy weirdo that used to be back there, but once I get filled with the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God comes, you're a different person. Yes. And when you begin to share Christ, I don't care where you are, here, there, Walmart, 7-Eleven, yes. yes. you get there and you begin to share Christ with somebody, what happens is the Spirit of God comes upon you yes. and you become a different person. Yes, you do. You have a different point of view. You have a different reality. You are inebriated all of a sudden and you can talk to anybody. Okay? Especially when you're around believers. Because yeah. the spirit in you yes. is com communicating yeah. with the spirit in me, and we are communicating on this level. Not only am I here, I'm there. Yeah. And not only am I there, uh, part of me is there. So it, it just, I thought it was kind of fun <laughs> to sing that song. I'll take another drink. Oh, you guys are looking at me like you never drank before in your life. <laughs> Grace first time ever. Uh, you know, uh, you must be looking at the I wrong people. I can totally relate to that. Because when God took me away from drugs, I said to him, so am I going to be that really timid, 
Yes. Mild person again. I don't like that person. Yes. And God said, I didn't create you to be timid. Hallelujah. I created you to be bold. And I was so excited. And y'all know I'm loud. Yeah. yeah. Amen. <laughs> we are all born to function in an altered state of consciousness. Yes. Either that or function in your own flesh. Yeah. Function without the Spirit of God moving in you. Function like that. I don't. I want you to know you wouldn't like me. You wouldn't listen to me. You wouldn't talk with me. You wouldn't hang with me. You wouldn't do nothing with me because I'm not a very, you know, I'm just very ordinary. I'm kind of a jerk. Don't know about See? So I just wanted you to know that without Christ, I ain't got it going on. Oh, right. And that's why when I sing this song, I'll take another drink. I just see myself bellying up to God's bar. Amen. I just bellying up there and saying, Ah, good have You know, I used to come in the bar and I'd hand the guy 20 bucks. Because I was short and kind of quiet and shy. So I wanted him to see me. Before, so when a lot of people were there, he'd look right over the top and say, what do you want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he would. He'd do that. So me, myself, I get here two hours before you all. And I yes. hand the Lord my 20 uh, bucks. Right. <laughs> I yeah. say, Lord, I want you to see me here. Here I am. I want a couple drinks before they get here. So I'll be ready when they walk in. I'm ready to party. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You know, you know I'll yeah, liquid curse. <laughs> it's also called spirits. Yes. <laughs> There's a spirit in that stuff that you don't want to hang around, man. Oh, Lord, I don't like that spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Had two husbands that liked it way too much. Yeah. yeah. My, uh, you know, it's interesting that people, Christians, when they're filled with the Holy Spirit, will pick it. We'll pick another Christian like them. Because I asked God for a girl like Regina before Regina ever showed up. And I wrote down my list. I wrote it down. And then I got all done with my list. And I said, there, God. Because I figured he was watching. He was watching. And he says, and then he spoke to me right out. He says, ah, you know, in order to be, have a girl like that, you're going to have to be a guy like that. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> but so, for the next, I forget that, I think I was 23 when I wrote that list. I was 41 when I got married. Wow. So it took me dang near 20 years to get my act together so it wouldn't ruin a woman. Because if I would have got married at 23, I was such a jerk, I'd never would have, I would have run them all off. Like everybody else, I've been married five, six times. Mm -hmm. you know? Nevada, Nevada. when I came to Nevada, I came from North Dakota, I had never heard the word divorce. No. Ever. Not in my really? life. I was 10 years old. Wow. Never heard the word divorce. When I got here, all my friends had, you know, they loved Christmas. So they had five or six dads, three or four moms, and we all got all these presents from all of them. I was just getting them from one shot. I thought, oh, what's up? <laughs> I kind of cheated, you know, <laughs> until I grew up a little and I realized what was actually going on. Oh, Praise the Lord. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. I heard somebody say this week, have a nice day to a person. And the person answered back, I'll try. And I yes. thought to myself, I hate that. Do or do not do. No try. <laughs> Did I do that all right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do or do not do. No try. I, t I tell people all the time, they say, how are you doing? I said, I don't like to let my circumstances rule the way I feel. Mm -hmm. In other words, my circumstances sometimes really suck. Mm -hmm. I have terrible circumstances. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things are happening in my life that, you know, it crush people. Sure. And then I got everybody else's problems coming my way, so I can be crushed if I want to, but I don't let my circumstances rule the way I feel. Mm -hmm. I have people come to me every day that are allowing their circumstances to rule their lives. Amen. So I have to yeah. minister to them, help them realize Amen. who they are in Christ, mm -hmm. and if God is on the throne, etc. You, you know where I'm going, okay? Yeah. So my circumstances don't rule the way I feel physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, I'm just having a bad day, Pastor. I just don't, you know, them people and stuff, and just having a terrible day. I'm thinking... 
You didn't listen on Sunday. <laughs> oh, you weren't here, that's why. <laughs> I ask people that come to me, they want to help, right? I say, where are you going to church? Well, we're not really going to church now. Well, maybe you ought to start there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you ought to go and get the word in you a little bit. That's awesome. Let somebody let somebody preach to you. Let somebody build you up in your faith. Amen. Find out who you are in Christ and who Amen. He is and what He's done when He came to earth. That's right. We're crying out loud. Oh yeah. <laughs> Obeying God is a smart thing to do, correct? Yes. Amen. But it's not so much the intellectual thing to do. Okay? Right. The choice to obey is a personal one. Not always intellectual. <laughs> See Dave? Say hi to them. Just do a good turn. Okay, whoever they are. Okay. Every person is made to reach out beyond himself. Okay, every person is made to reach out beyond himself. Every one of you guys, if you've gone anywhere in life, it's because you reach farther than yourself. You believe for something better. You you went to something. You went to school. You got a degree. You did that. You 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 know you went to learn how to read a tape. So you became a carpenter. Whatever. You reached higher than you were. So. I was thinking about this. Abraham in Hebrews 11. We'll go there in a second. Abraham, in fact, I'll read it. By faith, Abraham... Whoa, baby. Whoa, just, just <laughs> okay. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. So it wasn't mm -hmm. an intellectual decision. Yes. If he had an intellectual decision, he probably wouldn't have go. Right, he didn't right. know where to go. How many people have said, you'd meet him on the highway, you pick him up. Where are you going? I don't know. Well, I began to share Christ with them right then because if they don't, don't know where they're going here, they don't know where they're going there. That's right. Almost every time. So I began to share Christ with them so they'll have at least a purpose in life. But he didn't know where he's going, but he went anyway, obeyed God. How about Gideon? Gideon. There's an army of a million people down there. You've got about, what was it, about uh, 50,000. So I want you to get rid of everybody who's scared. And so he says, all right, whoever's scared, go home. 20,000 of them go home. Wow. You know, if you're in Vietnam and you're, you're commanding a troop, and if you tell the troops, say, every one of you guys who's scared to go on home. And you go like this, and you turn around, guess what's going to happen? Hey, nobody there. Everybody's scared to death. I mean, you're going after these. You ever, yeah. you ever see that movie, um, uh, We Were Soldiers? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. I I, oh, just don't see it. It's a terrible <laughs> movie. My God, war sucks. Yeah. It was just, and you know the, the general, he said, he said right the first movie, he says, I, I'm going with you, and I'm going to be the first foot on the ground. I'll be the last foot to leave. And so they made it a point in the picture to show his foot setting down is uh, Mel Gibson. And at the end of the show, oh, wow. they saw his foot coming off the ground, the last guy to leave. And he says, I'll never forgive myself. He says, and the guy says, why? He says, my men died and I didn't. Oh, man, that, you, that's like Jesus, you know? He just, just had a passion for people. He, he gave everything there was to give. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So... We obey God like that. In Ephi uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 5th verse, it says, By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering this week, what pleases God? And we'll go on to see, but... What do you think pleases God? This is not a trick question. You can't get it wrong, really. Unless you say something really stupid. But, so what do you think pleases God? Give me some feedback. To love your enemy. Love your enemy pleases the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. What else? Forgiveness. Forgiveness always pleases the Lord. It's a yes. good deal. Spreading the word. Spreading the word of God. Always a good thing to do. And we're going there. A little Spending time with Him. Spending time with God. That's right. Believe that he exists. Yeah, believe that he exists. Yeah. That right. he's a rewarder of those yes. who diligently yes. seek Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Righteousness. Righteousness blesses the Lord. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what righteousness means? Yeah. Righteousness means right standing with God. In order to have right standing with God, you must be holy and set apart. 
so righteousness is a big deal. A word of God from Genesis to the Revelation speaks of righteousness. Okay. And I like what Danny said. People. Loving people. Say, tell them obedience. 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 Yeah, that's a biggie. Hey, that Obeying God. Hey. Let's go. Let's go check that out. In fact, let's check out Sarah. It says down here, by faith in the eleventh verse. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past age. Mm -hmm. right. Why? Because she judged him faithful who had promised. Mm -hmm. Now, Sarah. Sarah, be, Sarah's reality up to this point is that I'm barren. That was her reality from her experience. Yes. Okay? A lot of people's experience don't bear out God or anything else, all right? <laughs> now watch this. Up to that point, she was barren. But then came the angel, told Abraham and her they're going to have a kid, and hope left in her heart again. Okay? Now her reality was based on the integrity of the one who had promised and the veracity of of his word and his promise. Her, in fact, all assurance rests in the word of God. Yes. All your assurance rests in the word of God. If it's not your experience, but it is the word of God, don't worry, your experience will catch up to the word. Absolutely. <laughs> Hallelujah, it just will. How many times he said, I am the righteousness of God in Christ? How many times have I said, I am crucified with Christ, and then you live like hell for a couple more days? <laughs> Go on, I don't understand. Yeah, just keep walking, buddy. You'll make it. Yeah. Right? Yes. And pretty soon you're living righteous before God. Pretty soon you're living holy. Why? Because you didn't stop. Amen. You didn't quit. Amen. And you weren't looking down your self-righteous nose at somebody else who wasn't making it. Mm -hmm. Instead, you reached out your hand, brought Amen. him up, and brought him in. Amen. Anytime we start thinking, well... That sorry sucker. I'm glad I'm not like him. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now we're in trouble. Right then you're in trouble. We're not judges of the word. We're doers of the word. Amen. Hallelujah. So Sarah. Sarah, look at this. Sarah did one thing. She believed the one who had spoke the promise. She believed the promise. Watch this. Sarah judged him faithful. So came Isaac. Right? Sarah had Isaac. So, out of Isaac came Jacob. Mm -hmm. Out of Jacob came the 12 tribes of Israel. One yes. of them was Judah. Yes. Out of Judah came David. Out of David came Mary and Joseph. And out of Mary and Joseph came Jesus. Jesus. And out of Jesus came you all. Mm -hmm. Amen. Listen to this. One act of obedience thousands of years ago is the reason you're here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. That is... What is that? What about your acts of obedience? Now, once you begin to walk in the Spirit, there are many times your act of obedience, but usually there's one act that launches you into a place where you can actually start walking with God. There's one act of obedience. One of those acts of obedience is surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. All the way just throwing yourself on Him and saying, Lord, there's nothing I have to offer you. Here I am. Take me as I am. Save my sorry hide. I remember doing that. I remember God saving me. Yes. And when he saved me, he actually saved me. Right. Yes. I, mean, I, would, I mean, I've done some weird things since then, but I'm telling you, when I got saved, I got saved. Mm -hmm. I haven't doubted that since, not once. No, yeah. I thought I was going to hell a few, a few times. I asked God to kill me a couple times, but I never didn't believe in him anymore. Right, yes. right, yes. right. Praise the Lord. And he saved me. He put his spirit within me. And he made me one time. God says, I want you to look as far inside of yourself as you can. I thought, you want me to look inside? Oh. I thought, oh, crap. You know, you know what I'm talking about. So, so, so I started looking inside. He says, look deeper. And I found some things. He says, look deeper. And when I got as deep inside of me as I could, what I found was, I love God. Amen. 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 That's Amen. what's inside of me, as yeah. deep as I can go. Right. I love God. So that is a foundation of my heart. Amen. It's a foundation of all my life yeah. from then Amen. on. Jesus. Because that's what's in me. When I'm, when I'm uh, not doing it right, when I think I've lost it, when I've done all this stuff, or when somebody else is so screwed up, I, no, I love God. Amen. And I'm going to follow Him, and I'm going to get up, and I'm going to walk on. A righteous mm -hmm. man falls seven times in a day. But he gets up and he walks on. Right. And hopefully he brings somebody with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I mean, why else get filled with the Holy Ghost, right? Right. I mean, what is it? Uh, 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 
Acts 1.8, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what happens when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a good thing. John 10.10 10 says, you know, yes. the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life, and that more abundantly. All right, a house, turkey in the fridge, car in the garage. You know, okay, maybe so. That's part. Prosperity is a part of the kingdom of God. Praise His holy name. True. I mean, I'm not going to go into that. But the point is, when He fills you with the Spirit, it's for anointing to minister this way. Yes. It's for anointing to touch somebody else's life and bring them into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. yes. That's why God empowers us by the Holy Spirit. What? Mm -hmm. To be witnesses unto me. To be a testimony unto me. So when somebody comes to you, you know, what, Jesus said uh, in John 14, in fact, I'll read it to you. I get all excited and I forget to read. John 14, in the seventh verse, he says, if you, Six is this it? <coughs> 14, six. Yeah. I think so. Okay. It says, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from now on, now on you know him, and you have seen him. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said, You've seen the Father. Okay, yes. he's talking from... Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. In other words, give us some sort of vision of God up there. Now Jesus could not have that because what they would have done, they would have took the image of God, made an image over here, and yes. started worshiping something on this level. Yes. Jesus, God is invisible. He never has been invisible. God is invisible. Okay? So you worship a God you cannot see. Why? Uh, well, we'll go, go, let's go on here. Okay? It says, Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Okay, now Philip and the guys are looking at Jesus. Because they figure God is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what did Jesus say? Look at this. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? That's a biggie. Study that out sometime. Yeah. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. So guys, I'm not the Father. He's in me. Mm -hmm. I'm here, but He's here. Mm -hmm. He's doing the work. Mm -hmm. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. He's doing the work. It's me, but it's him. <laughs> believe, <laughs> believe me, I'm in the Father, and the Father's in me, or else believe me for the very works themselves. The works that I do, he's doing. The thoughts that I think, he's thinking. I'm thinking his thoughts, I'm etc. Okay? So watch this. So as God does this stuff for us, he says, uh, show us the Father. So what they had to do was come to a realization on a different plane altogether. They could not have God up there, okay? And they could not have Jesus here. They had to realize, come to a different decision, that he was here. It isn't the God out there that empowers you. It's the God here. When you are born again, his spirit comes in within you. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you receive power, and he's here then. Yes. You don't have to reach out there to bring him here to do something there. In fact, when you're loving somebody on this plane, it's Him loving them through you, even though yes. you're not thinking about yes. Him. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. 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 That's right. Glory to God. Amen. So you don't have to be thinking about God every second of the day just to be because the Spirit in you is ministering to the Spirit in you. Amen. It's on this plane. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful thing. Yes. I, it's always been Christ in us. It's always been from the Old Testament all the way through. They said, well, the Spirit of God came upon people then. No, no, no. It no, says he was in them, in them, in them, in them. I can prove it to you in several Old Testament scriptures. Yes. But in fact, Peter said that all the, all the prophets, the Spirit of God was in them sure. saying these things. Yes, of course. So Absolutely. he was in them. So yes. it's always been God inside of us. Yes. That's the reality that people have to come to. Yes. And when you realize that, when you get a handle on that, all of a sudden you'll be going, huh, well, well, well. <laughs> I'm back a bag of chips, that's right. Come on. Now, I'm going to read you something out of the Passion Translation of the Bible. 
It's in Galatians. You'll like this because you've read it a thousand times. I am. This is the way the King James says it. I am crucified with Christ. No, Nevertheless, I live. Now look what he does. Look at this. I am crucified with Christ, so I'm dead. Oh, but yeah, but nevertheless, I'm alive because I'm still here. Right. Oh, yeah, but yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Amen. Yeah. What is that? I'm crucified, so I'm dead. Oh, yeah, I'm alive. Oh, yeah, but it's not me. I'm dead. He's alive. He's living. Mm -hmm. So the life I love, now live in this flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Right. So there is, it's a paradox. Yes. Is it me or him? Yes. Yes. Both and. Mm -hmm. It's me and him. Absolutely. I don't know how it works. It's a, it's a thing that cannot be explained in this realm. Right. It's a spiritually discerned understanding. And when you get it, man, he's in there. All of a sudden, you're, you're thinking, you just want to get him out. You walk by people, you go. <laughs> Never do that. I know a guy used to minister, he used to go. Like that. <laughs> People would be going, ooh! I'm thinking, nah. <laughs> but you get up there and you do that, and there's some kind of power coming out of that thing, you know? I'm thinking, okay, that's the Holy Ghost. You ever have somebody lay hands on you and you fall down? Mm -hmm. What the heck is that? I did not believe that. I was a Christian for 10 years before, you know, I'm thinking, they're faking it. Something's going, something's going on. <laughs> and I was full believing. I was a Pentecostal Holy Ghost guy, you know. I was there, you know. And and but I still didn't believe that until one day. You got hit. <laughs> <laughs> one day, the guy says, "You better get all you can get. You're going to need it all." It was Ray Brooks. I don't know if you ever met him. Anyway, he blew on me <sighs> like that. I thought, deep spiritual thing. He's chewing search. <laughs> I'm saying, I had to do that when I preach. I wouldn't stink so bad, right? <laughs> this is the spiritual things I was thinking. And then he went like this and he blew on me again. And I don't know, the only thing I can translate it in it is being on acid and not knowing where you are. <laughs> I was just gone. And I and I and my eyes were this big and I was reaching for him to grab him as I was going down. I, I fell down right on my butt and I was just going. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the guy, I thought, oh, this is real. <laughs> it was amazing. So God is really alive. Yes. Them guys used to lay hands on me and I'd get like this. <laughs> they were not going to knock me down. That guy got pushing on me to my neck. <laughs> you ever do that? Oh, the, you got to push me down, buddy. <laughs> and then you got blue down. So. And then I got, yeah, the guy didn't even touch me. <laughs> I want you to know it wasn't his breath that knocked me down. He was too insert. That was a good thing. Praise the Lord. So you didn't so, read the passion version. I did. Didn't I read it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. good. So my old identity has been crucified with Messiah, and no longer lives. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him, and now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the Anointed One lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My life is empowered by faith. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. That is a good depiction of what's happened to us. Mm -hmm. His power lives in us to a point where it is no longer we who live. And if you want that all the time, you can have that. It's a, it's a, it isn't so much of an intellectual thing. It's a thing that you, that you get into that space. Now, it's always true. When if you're born again, the Holy Ghost is in there. Not that you function like that all the time. Right. Right. Okay? It's a decision and an act of your will every day to let your will go to God and allow Him to live through you like that. In fact, in fact, sometimes God will take me and use me when I'm at my worst. Yes. <laughs> Just the nastiest, doing the stupidest yeah. thing. I'm not good in love with my wife. My kids are driving me crazy to dog, get out of here, you know. <laughs> Just not having a good day. And then somebody will show up at the house and and I'll minister by the power of God, knowing that it's the power of God, wondering, how can you use this stupid creep? You know, and I just minister, they get saved. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, 
What, do I have to be nasty to get it filled? <laughs> God is showing me that it's not about me. It's about Him. It's not how I feel. It's not that. It's His Spirit in me doing that powerful work. And that's, that's kind of why I sang that song, uh, uh, Come Holy Spirit. Marvin, you sing that every every service. Hey, Matt, sing that song. You know, <laughs> come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come Holy Spirit. And that's what uh, Catherine Coleman used to do. Yeah. She'd say, she go, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He's all I got. Yeah. Yes. Right. Woo! Glory yeah, to yeah. God. You know, right. just oh. and he is. It's all. It's all we got. What else do we got? Right. Well, ourselves. Good luck. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So First John. Jump over there just a second. I don't, I'm not going to go very long and far today, I don't think. So, in 1 John 5, 3 through 5, I don't know why I wrote this down, but I, I'm going to read it anyway. Amen. It says, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Mm -hmm. Woo! He who is he who overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you all believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Guess what? You can overcome the world. Right. Whatever part of the world is on you today, you can overcome that thing. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then it says in the 10th verse, I love this, it says, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness or testimony in himself. Mm -hmm. He who does not believe in God has made God a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony right, yeah. that wow. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Woo. Wow. These right. things I have written unto you that believe in the name of son, the Son of God that you might continue to believe. Mm -hmm. Whatever you feel today, on TV, wherever you are, whatever you're feeling, if you're feeling down and out, there is a, look, look at this, it says, um, uh, there is a candle in every soul, mm -hmm. some brightly burning, some dark and cold, mm -hmm. but there is a spirit who brings a fire, yes. ignites a candle and makes us home. Mm -hmm. If you've never had your candle lit, or your candle's out today, I want you to know, you can get lit on fire again. Amen. Amen. But I've tried so many times. Try again. Amen. Just go for it. Go into God. Find God. Find what He's doing. Find what He has for you. Go ahead and get... get light yourself on fire. People come and watch you burn. Mm -hmm. They will. Right. They will just come and watch you burn. Christians are the coolest people on earth. Amen. They are the coolest people on earth. They... they I. I knew Christians before I was one, and I used to argue with them. <laughs> no. It bothered me that they thought they knew more than me. Because I was an Eastern religion, transcendental meditator, you know, athlete, cool guy. So I'd argue with these people about yeah, Jesus. Really. And my sister was, oh, she was such a... Anyway, I love her. <laughs> I talked to her about becoming... Cosmic conscious, God conscious. And she looked at me and she says, I'm conscious of God all the time. Mm. I talk to him every day, all day. Right. And I knew, because my sister doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. She just doesn't lie. And I looked at her, and she wasn't deceiving herself. She was telling the truth. Right. And I, it scared me. It did. It made me nervous. I thought, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> and so I had to come to a place. And she just showed me, because I thought Jesus was cool, so I wouldn't ask my... My guys, whatever they were called then, I forget. Uh, gurus. I wouldn't ask them, what about Jesus? Oh, yes, he was an avatar. He's a manifestation of God on earth, like Guru Dev, and Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, and, and uh, uh, Krishna, and Vishnu, and all of those guys. And so I read all her books and stuff like that. But they said that. And then my sister takes me to John 14, 6, where Jesus is written in red. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no man Amen. comes to the Father but by me. Amen. Amen. And I thought, those guys lied. Either Jesus is lying, or they're lying. Yeah. And I thought, 
Jesus is way cooler than those guys. <laughs> so I changed. I changed because I thought Jesus was cool because he was. You know, so then I got I got saved. Soundly saved, praise the Lord. So in first John eleven and twelve I wrote down here. Uh, I, I read that already. Yes. Okay. Okay. So okay. So the first for us, Christ comes in vertically and fills us up. At that point in time something happens to us, okay? In John 14, and I, did I already read this? John 14, where it says, show us the Father and it suffices us. Yeah, Philip says, show us the Father and it will suffice us. So, so if we see who, him who is invisible, let me put it this way. I found this thing in this little book this week, or this week, this morning, after I studied all this out. My buddy, um, uh, Rick Fair, I don't know if you know know him. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he, he has a testimony in here, in this book. Okay? Oh, here it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, that ain't it. I had it marked last service. Who unmarked it? Did you do that? <laughs> Hang on, I'll find it. But it's so good. Okay. Of course it is. It is. Rick died. He had a hole in his heart. So big that when they stuck the, the camera up there, they got in there looking for the hole. They were it was so big they were inside the hole and they didn't see it. Oh, oh wow. Really? He was oh born with that. Oh, he God. was number five in the nation, a wrestler hmm. at the 118 pound class in college. Fifth in the nation wow. as a wrestler. Can you imagine that? And he wasn't getting enough oxygen to him. So one day he passed out in his car. He, he's driving along and he told his son, hey, I'm going to pass out. And so he tried to get over and he passed out. And so his, his kid reached over and got the brakes on. Anyway, so he went to the doctors. This crazy stuff. Oh my gosh. And I'll find it. I really will. But he is my second favorite preacher. Oh, yeah. yeah he's, like, he's my favorite. I went there one week when I didn't have to come here. I went there one week and I thought, I'm glad people don't come here. They'd never come back. <laughs> 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 that boy preaching good, man. <laughs> he's jumping around there. That's where I send all my real friends. They, you know, oh, yeah, sure. He is so good. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. Maybe I can't find this. Waters. But maybe I can. Not a very long book. Lula Adams wrote this. Uh, Glenn's Glenn Cox's wife. She's oh yeah. Lula Cox now. Anyway, I she wrote that. It. She wrote this book. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So Rick started yelling. No, that's the wrong Rick. Okay. If I can't find the next thirty seconds, I'll do something else. Thirty, twenty-nine, twenty-eight. 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, here it is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He experienced the same sick sensation as before in the car and told his wife. Uh, and she asked him, like in the car? And he said, exactly. The steady beat on the heart monitor flatlined. His wife said, is that you? He says, I think it's me. And he passed out. Oh, my God. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that night, the reality of death began to plague him. Fearful thoughts of dying prompted him to stay up till three, commanding his heart to keep beating. Can you imagine that? Wow. How would you like, you know, you already passed out twice, your heart's stopping, wow. and they're just leaving you laying there. So anyway, he took authority over his heart, commanded it to keep working. Finally, at 345, he felt him. He's worn out. Lord, you've been making my heart pump my entire life. There's nothing I can do right now. It's yours. And then he wondered in prayer, why the heck would I not want to go to heaven and be in your presence? Mm -hmm. Because he had experienced this wonderful presence of God, and, and he was there, and he's right at the, the gate of heaven. And he said, I don't want to go, or I'm not going. He said it emphatically. And I believe, I'm going to go to him next week and tell him, I believe that was a prophetic thing. He's in the spirit, he just proclaimed, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. And immediately he was back in the car with the EMT, Dragging him out of the car. Uh -huh. Okay? So, anyway. Okay. Why the heck do I want to go? Clearly, Rick 
heard the Lord say to him, you know how cool it was to be in my presence when, when your heart stopped? How glorious it was? And God says, I like it. Yeah. And Rick said, I liked it too. He liked it, all right? But, you know, when you are talking, when you're talking with another person and the glory that's in you, that's heaven in you, and the glory that's in the other person, and you talking, and I get to be in the center of that, yes, I really like that, the Lord said. Okay? Now listen to this part. When you and your friend turn, and another person doesn't have any idea who I am, and you share that glory with them, yes, I really, really like that. Um, that's so awesome. That is pretty awesome. And then Rick understood. It was about purpose and meaning. All that comes down, all of it comes down to sharing the love of God with those who don't know it. And and then he says, so that Jesus can continue having an encounter with them also. Because God likes it when we fellowship, but when we minister to somebody else that light, and they get born again. Uh, Lana had a vision this morning. He was his dad or Levon. Anyway. We were praying about crowns. And they saw a whole room full of crowns. Mm. So I see a whole room full of crowns. And, and I thought, no. we, us guys, mm -hmm. get to take those crowns mm -hmm. and put them on people. Mm -hmm. Every time somebody gets born again, every time you minister to somebody and they, they get saved, you're putting the crown upon their head. Mm -hmm. There's a lots of crowns up there. Remember that sermon I preached that once? Put your horn with oil. And then he said, go anoint a king. Right. I want you to say to you today, go get your horn filled with oil and go anoint a king. Because yeah. right. every time you get somebody saved, you're anointing a king to live the victorious life. Amen. In Christ. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So God, we are, we are your people. We are those people who go forth into this world and share the gospel with people. And we love it that you fill us with your spirit giving us testimonies from people in uh, Hebrews 11, and then show us, showing us in 12 that we can present ourselves to you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I pray that you'd set up opportunities this week that we can touch somebody's life for Jesus. We thank you for these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, Pastor, I have a testimony. Yeah, you have that. Wait, wait just a second. Okay. Lord, thank you for letting us give today. We we're excited. The lights are still on. The yes. heater was working way too good there for a while. We thank you for this, Lord, for letting us give in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, good. So, um, uh, I was when I was ministering one day at uh, Bible Passage, a young girl came in. Her name was Emily, and um, I introduced myself and I, you know, give the little spiel that I always do. I don't teach anything unless it comes out of the Bible and no denomination, all of that stuff. And she says, well, I'll tell you about me. And I said, okay. She said, I don't know who Jesus is. I don't know anything about him. I've never been taught God. So I don't even Ooh. know if God exists. She got saved the next week. All right. And she has never missed. All right. No. Hallelujah. Yeah, yes. God. Yes. I like so when it. When you said that, putting nothing. that crown on that, Ooh. you know. Yeah. Amen. It was a big deal. So exciting. Yeah. So exciting. I mean, very exciting. What, what, what more fulfilling thing? When it, I don't know if all you have ever led anybody to Christ. Mm. But if you have, it is the coolest thing there ever was. If you're having trouble with sin, if you're having trouble with unforgiveness, go talk to somebody about Jesus. And it will cure you. Just will. Something happens on the inside of you when you start to give out what's inside of you. Something happens... And you forget about the don'ts. In fact, what was it I wrote down? Hang on, right before you go. Uh, I'll, I'll give to yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. In in Ephesians 5:10 it says, find out what pleases the Lord. Yeah. Right. Find out what pleases the Lord. And I wrote down here, not only what doesn't. Yeah. Because sometimes people come before the Lord and they just start explaining to God what they don't have and how much they're screwed up. And, you know, what doesn't please I know what doesn't please. Find out what does please them. Right, yeah. Not what doesn't so much. Right. If you're busy doing the do's, you really don't have time to do the don'ts. Right. Mm -hmm. So the doesn'ts don't make that much difference. That's right. Amen. <laughs> and there's so many more do's. You know, there are 3,500... 
How many is there? 3,573 promises in the Word of God. Wow. Yes. Wow. Go find one. Wow. <laughs> God bless you guys. Have a great day.